Hi, I'm Susan Clare, Gourmet Quilter, because quilting is delicious. So I thought today we'd have a little bit of fun with a Dutchman's puzzle block. So this is a traditional block, um, and it's all about colour placement. So what I've done here, I started with my black and white stripe. So the, the Dutchman's puzzle block is, if you like, in four units, and each of those four units have two units, which is a flying geese unit. So this is a little, oops, that's fine one you can see, a flying geese. It's usually a triangle with two different corners on making it into a rectangle. So very often we see flying geese with the same colour either side of the triangle. But part of the way, I, well the way I've done this one for its colour placement is that all the triangles are different. And so I started with my black and white stripe. I wanted to do something that was kind of fun with those. And the bright colours always work really well with something like that. And so I put a red um, triangle on one end of that flying geese unit and I put a sort of bluey colour one on the other end and then this flying geese unit I've sort of used yellow orangey colours and I've got a green and just a neutral or white or something for the back like a background colour is the way I've done it but you can play around with these sorts of things you can draw the block up and colour them in and have a whole lot of fun so what we need to have is four flying geese units with the stripe and this time I've swapped the colours around. I've got a green where my red was, so I should have a little green pinwheel. So what we're finding is that we're getting this pinwheel appearing with the stripe and then a secondary pinwheel with that colour that's on one end. So what we'll end up with is a little green pinwheel instead of the red here. So I've already done some of my geese units, but I thought I'd just quickly run through making a geese, just in case you haven't made them before. So what we've got here is is a rectangle for the central part. I've got my striped one and my coloured one. And then with my triangles, I'm going to start with a square. And I've marked already, just with a pencil and ruler, I've marked a diagonal line from point to point. And then I've marked a second line half an inch away by laying on the half inch line of my ruler along that first line and drawing another one. And I've done that on all these squares and all the ones that I've made because I'm going to save this corner triangle here. So if I do the second seam now, it's already as a small half square triangle unit to be used in some other delicious project. So what I thought we'd do is get started and you can train PC. So we'll make these two geese so that you can see what I'm doing. So I've got that one ready and then I've, I do need to make sure that my uh, corner one that I'm using as my background colour is always in the same corner. But also if I want that pinwheel to work, we've got to make sure that these are always on the same end of our rectangles. So colour placement is fairly important with, with doing it the way I'm doing it for this block. So I'm just sewing right on that diagonal line from point to point. And so you can have the, the whole block or numerous blocks all ready to go and just chain piece them through, which is always quite nice. And then I'm going to do that second line of stitching that I drew the half an inch away so that I can cut between the two lines. Again, you can chain piece four of those through as well. If you don't like flying geese, there could be a little bit of a problem with this pattern. However, I think some things are worth doing. And I think this block is really fun when it's done. I love the colours. I, it, it, of course, doesn't have to be a black and white stripe. It could be any colour that you like in there. I just happened to have some black and white stripe and thought it would be fun to use them. So I've trimmed between the two lines. These corners here will make quite a nice little half square triangle unit when they're pressed out that's quite usable. So they're spare for another day. Now I'm just going to press my seam and I'm going to press the seam into the triangle. So I like to press from the right side oops, so that uh, it goes over nicely at the seam point. And then we have to sew the other triangle on the other end. So we want the green on the other end with the red. So now we want the triangle to sit, sorry, the square to sit on the other end of the rectangle and we're going to sew the diagonal and it will overlap the one that we've just sewn and we need it to do that so that the overlap is where the seam allowance will come in when we sew it together. So many things to sew together. 
So again, I'm stitching right on that long diagonal line. And the same on this one. We'll get this one ready so that that line overlaps up there. So it doesn't take too long to make some of these blocks. I mean, you may find you've got loads of leftovers of uh, two and a half inch strips. So I've, that's what I've used. I've cut some into squares for these corners and the rectangles are two and a half inches by four and a half inches for the geese. So it makes an eight inch uh, block which will measure at eight and a half inches. So I'll just do this second line of stitching. between the two lines of stitching. So the corners, press these over. So it should still be a rectangle, it's just had its corners replaced. Oops. So they're looking pretty good now. So now we just need to start sewing those together. So they go together in pairs. So we've got to make up the, the, the four units. So the pairs are basically all the same like that because then what we'll do is turn, whoops, let's get them around the right way. Because then we will be turning them around so that the corner comes in each time of that. So I might go ahead and sew those pairs together and then we can join those units up. So when we join these together here, so we're joining this one on top of the, if, if you use something like the stripe but your main focal one here, your other one sits above that so we want to put them right sides together and everything should match because we press those seams out to the corners that's sitting nice and flat there. Just make sure that everything is sitting well and it will because you've sewn it beautifully and then just stitch across your quarter inch there. So I'll just do this one just to show you how that works in the center with that point. Just make sure the edges stay nicely lined up here. So what we've got is a really nice little point at the top there and we're going to press that seam away from that point. So these little edges here won't want to press, they'll need a little bit of encouragement. But I found that most things can be encouraged if you're gentle with them. Oops, my iron is catching again. So that we've got that sitting out nicely like that. So I'll go ahead and get the others done and then show you how we put those together. So I've made the four units. We've got the stripe and a color above. The greens, the blues, the reds are all in the same places on each unit. So that's a good start. So what we now need to do is set these blocks so that we've got this stripe or focal fabric coming around in a pinwheel. So basically we're just alternating these or turning them around as we go. So this time I've got the green secondary pinwheel happening there. And I think that looks quite fun. So we just now need to join them up into pairs so we can do those two and press the seams so that when we join them together they'll alternate. So I'll go ahead and get these uh, joined together and then come back and show it to you when the block is pretty much all together. So I've sewn them together, the two sets of units together. So don't be tempted to just put it there, just make sure that you turn. So I've pressed both those seams that way make sure you turn one of them round so that we end up with that pin wall going around. So now, and those seams will now all go in opposite directions so we can nestle that centre seam, which is going to be quite bulky. And so I'll go ahead and get this seam stitched as well now. So I've joined those together, but because we've got a whole lot of bulk in that centre, even though they're going in opposite directions, I'm going to suggest opening that seam out. So that just means that you've got to press that open and that just relieves some of the bulk at that central point where your seams are matching up so beautifully. 
and sometimes just finger pressing that seam open just ahead of ironing it helps as well. The seams are not huge when we're doing this sort of thing. And sometimes we need two hands. But it's happening. So if we just press that seam open, that will help with everything sitting. It's being stubborn today. That's okay, that's the way it goes. And that's looking pretty good. So we've got a nice little pinwheel. It's meeting nicely in the centre there. And I think that's looking pretty good. So what I've done is move those colours around but use the same fabrics for both blocks. So you can see you can get variety even within. We could, you can get all sorts of things happening. You might want to turn your block around. And where they meet, they're going to, with that white corner or whatever corner you've chosen to put on, you could end up with that forming a little square. I I probably would sash mine, so what I've done here is a possible layout that you could do with the blocks where I've done a, a three inch, suggested a three inch sashing with a, an inch of the background and also an inch of the stripe again or whatever that colour is there to bring it all together. So that was just a suggested layout that you could do or they could go together and form all sorts of different combinations. So it was just something to play with, just an idea where you might use a stripe if you wanted to, or it could be a fun dot, or it could be any number of things in there. But uh, doing a traditional block in today's fabrics and colours I think is uh, always such a fun thing to do. Thank you.